Welcome to season 10 of the More Than Sunday podcast. I'm Rohini Drake, your host. And this season, which we're calling Love Served Here, we took the show on the road and visited with some of your favorite local restaurants as they shared stories of how they're growing communities around food. Now, as they shared some of the, their stories, we were able to learn uh, some of their tips and tricks and secrets that we can apply in our own individual lives and also in the spaces that we share. In this very first episode, we got to sit down with Marixa Trejo, who is the owner of La Casita Bake Shop here in Richardson, Texas. And she shared some beautiful stories of how she's creating a team and a family with her staff and customers. And I was surprised to learn the inspiration behind her famous churro cruffin. I hope you enjoy the conversation and stories that Marixa shares. I feel so lucky, so honored to be able to just sit down with you and get to ask you all the questions that I want to know the answers to because I'm such a big fan of this place and any chance I get, I'm here. Oh, thank you. And so one of the things I wanted to know was just like, where did the idea come from for La Casita and even the name? Like, what was the influences there? I I feel like my whole life I've been very, like, I wouldn't say insecure, but just very, like, like scared to do anything that someone else, like, didn't tell me to do. Mm. And so in a weird way, I, I had traveled a lot and I came back to Dallas and I was like, I want to, I'm going to, I was looking for who to work for, like a mentor. And I was like, what if I became, this sounds so stupid. What if I became my own mentor? And I was like, what if I like pushed myself instead of having, looking for someone to push me? Uh, so Loxita was kind of born out of like, both like an insecurity of like, who, like where I wanted to work for back in Dallas. Cause I had traveled and lived in New York and uh, Portland. And I had had such great people there that I was like, I not that I felt like Dallas was lacking, but there's not a lot of pastry places here in Dallas that have put Dallas on the map. And so I was like, what if I started that? And it sounded like an ambition, which was not normal for me. Mm -hmm. And so when I started it, I was like, I also wanted a safe place for like, uh, not just women, but different types of people and like different like ethnicities, different like cultural black backgrounds, different like like ideologies and so like weirdly enough like that didn't happen till like years later where because it was just me and my husband for the longest time um but like nowadays I have people kind of coming here for those reasons I had someone that was like hey I didn't feel super like welcomed at my last job they felt like I was either like to this or to that and coming here felt different for them even just like coming to eat here with their family they were like I felt like this was different and that was like honestly like the coolest thing for me because I was like as an owner I didn't know if I'd ever achieve that in my lifetime I was like you know you just never know but me and my husband I feel like we've tried really hard to make La Casita like a place for people to grow and not because just because they're a man or they're like super hardworking because we've had people that have like become hardworking um and people who have like you know kind of sh shined here as you know like cooks or pastry people where people in their lives were like you're gonna go do that really so I think it's kind of like been cool to be nominated and then ha go have some of the bakers go back and be like see like this is what I'm doing which is really cool one of the things I love about La Casita is from the first time I came in here like you said it feels different and your entire staff is so kind and Aww. so welcoming great conversationalists and every time we come like we have a positive interaction mm -hmm. with someone and then sitting back and eating here watching your staff interact with each other like I've been here where there was like a um, baby shower that y'all oh, were throwing yeah. for somebody and it oh, just yeah. feels like this is a family like you've cultivated great culture and I wonder like where does that come from did it come from like an just a desire to do that or just recognizing there's not a lot of spaces that do that um I feel like a little bit of both. Like, I feel like in cooking, uh, especially when you're trying to strive for, like, awards and, like, accolades, you get lost in the, like, hey, it's about, like, me, the chef, or, like, the the main team, the sous chefs and the, pa and the pastry chef or the chef. Um, and, like, here we're, like, trying to cultivate the fact that, like, the person making the pastry cream that ends up getting, like, piped and made pretty by somebody else matters too. Mm -hmm. And so, like, intentionally we're trying to make sure that everybody is, like, 
trained and understands that like there you even if you have experience you don't just come in here and start making things you have to make butter blocks and you have to laminate croissant dough and then you have to start, you know like there's there's like a rhythm and it's not just because like I want you to be like like I don't want you to do the mundane things just because you're new here I want you to understand that there is an intention behind every single thing that we do and then everything that gets put together is like a cultivation of all of us putting it together, not just one person. And so even a couple of items on the menu this month are not mine. They're um, a couple of other sous chefs. So like it's it's intentionally made to make us feel like a team and not like an eye. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think it, we've worked really hard. I mean, my husband, it's funny because he's the mom of the bakery and I'm definitely the dad. I definitely try to say yes to everything. And I'm like, hey, go ask your mom. Uh, and so he like, he's like, like, are you guys doing okay? Like, he, he'll help them with their cars or he'll go. There was one of our bakers who had a mouse in her house and it, she was, like, loose in her house. She couldn't, they're like, she's like, my apartment complex won't take it out. So he went to her apartment, took out the mouse, like, 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 trapped it and then let it free outside. And I was like, why would you do that? He's like, well, she, she was freaked out. And I was like, you're so right. Why wouldn't you do that? But, like, I, as a girl, I was like, I don't want to go do that. And neither did she, but he went to go do that. And so he's definitely, like, the mom of the bakery because he always asks them are you okay or like just he's just very nurturing um we don't have kids of our own so he's like i'm gonna nurture these little like you know these Aww. kids we call them kids but they're like in their 20s um <laughs> but uh it's just fun to like like it really does feel like a family and it you know i feel like everybody says that they're like oh we're a family here like you said there was uh, one of our dishwashers who's actually on maternity leave right now and she was like freaking out she thought we were gonna fire her and i'm like i would never oh. but we threw a bur like a baby shower for her and everybody came together and like bought her everything she yeah. needed because she was like there's no way i can afford everything so she's on maternity leave right now and she had her baby like earlier than planned but we were like kind of ready for it um and uh, like she honestly was she was like, I can't believe that I because she's from Honduras and she's like, I can't believe I fell into this like family like out of nowhere. She's like I was living in these like very tiny apartments, like not too far from here. And I was looking for a job in walking or like Uber distance that I couldn't. And so she's like and I she got recommended by somebody and uh, that person ended up leaving and she stayed. And she's like, I can't believe that like this is what came out of me just getting a job. You know, and right. I was like, very, it makes me very happy because like I, we've checked in on her and she's doing really great. And I'm like, I'm, I'm happy because like, like I said, everybody wanted to help. And that's just not the normal everywhere. No, it really isn't. And I feel like listening to you talk about how you're instilling kind of those character traits that you want um, in your staff, it, you're building like a team. Like it's the definition, yeah. I feel like, of building team and teamwork. But then outside of that nurturing it like a family like oh, y'all yeah. care about each other outside of this place and that is really special <laughs> and I think whether you can see it or not like people that come here and you know I've never spoken with you before but like to just experience it like it feels like that like I get that impression and I think everybody does and I think that's why everybody besides the amazing food oh, thank that's you. part of the reasons that we like to come back and hang out here as long as we can. Yeah. <laughs> I know I have people here that are like, am I okay to stay here this long? And I'm like, as long as there's are able to sit and there's not a wait, like go ahead. Cause like I have people that come here with their kids, like, uh, like at least once a week and I'll see them. And, uh, we've like, we've actually became, become friends with them. And like, uh, it's weird. Cause like, you just, I would never have interacted with them otherwise. Like one of some, one of them is a banker and he lives like close by. Um, the reason why we even were in the Half Price Books location that we just opened was the Half Price Books, the owner of Half Price Books, her mom started it. She is the owner now. She, she was a regular, I didn't even know. Oh. And so she came in and was like, hey, like just because of like us baking. And so it was, it's kind of cool the amount of community that we've been able to like cultivate here through just baking. Yeah, no, I think that says a lot that people want to spend their time here. Like they feel welcomed, they feel safe, they feel comfortable. And I just think that's such a great piece of what La Casita, La Casita is in the community. So what is your history? Like, I know that, you know, you traveled around, you landed here in Dallas, but like, how long have you been interested in cooking or baking? I feel like I've always been interested in cooking and baking. I just was not like, like some people are just really good out the bat. My husband was just really good out the bat. It took a, 
a little bit of time <laughs> for me to get there. I remember the first time I ever made anything like sweet because I was a savory cook for two two to three years um, before I started doing pastry. And um, I uh, the first thing I baked was a cheesecake, and I ended up like getting sick from it. Oh. And no one else in my family ate it because it looked terrible. And I was like, well, like just out of pride, I'm like, I'm gonna eat it. So I hate ate like half of it, and then I was like, I don't feel good, mom. Oh, no. uh, so after that, I couldn't eat cheesecake for the longest time. But beyond that, I was like, I hate baking. I literally, I, I, when I went to culinary school, um, I decided to go to culinary school and kind of just, I, I went through a community college. I'm like, if I hate it, then I only spent this amount of money mm -hmm. on it, but I ended up loving it. It was like, it was weird. Cause I'm like, Oh, I, I kind of started to understand that there was like only very introverted oddballs go into the back of the house, like front of the house people, they're on, they're almost like actors They're like, and then we're all the like you know, the extras in the back just like kind of move and like get out of their way. But uh, it, it felt very like natural for me to be in a kitchen. And uh, I, I loved it. But I've been in love with cooking since I was like a baby. Like I remember my mom, we I'd go to the grocery store with her. I'd help her make tortillas. I would like I would just want to be in the kitchen because that's where all the like gossip was for my tias mm -hmm. and my mom. So I was like, this is the place to be like, this is how I know it like what's going on in the family was with just like being very quiet and uh, like helping them out. And um, it just, I don't know why, just cooking brings people together. Um, you know what I mean? Like it, it I, I have this, this term that I heard years ago called uh, flavor memories. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's people that like, you could put something in front of you that like, let's say I put it in front of you that your mom used to make. And it just kind of brings you back and nothing really else does that, besides, you know, beyond like, uh, like hearing music, yes, but like flavor is mm -hmm. such a like to each person is so distinct to them. Like, like I remember my mom making uh, tortillas, like fresh tortillas, and anytime I smell that smell, it reminds me of her, and that'll never go away. It's just right. kind of cool to interact with people like that. So early on, I mean, instead of watching Cartoon Network, I was watching In a Garden and like Food Network, and my mom was like, "Why do you like this?" I was like, "I don't know. She's interesting." Because <laughs> it always interested you. Yeah. I love that that uh, that memory of food and flavors that can bring us to good memories. And I feel like you're creating the good memories here. <laughs> like people are gonna try something somewhere. Like, wait, this reminds me of my favorite place, La Casita. Oh, <laughs> that's super cool. I never thought about that. <laughs> yeah, I think yeah, you're making it for people now. I know my kids who come here love it. And you know, if if there's a choice in the morning, like where we can go, it's it's always gonna be here. <laughs> So you said you'd been in New York and then you came back to Dallas and mm -hmm. there was kind of this hole here. There wasn't like a great mm -hmm. um, pastry culture, I guess. Um, so what made you land here in Richardson? I actually, so I was doing wholesale. I've done whole, wholesale since the beginning. Mm -hmm. uh, one of our wholesale clients uh, was getting rid of a tiny spot in Richardson and I was like, We'll go see it because everything else we had looked at like different options to like we were in a rent a kitchen basically and it was costing us a lot and so we were like let's go look at this kitchen and uh it's literally right across the street from this big the, our bigger location and uh i was like oh my god it was like perfect i was like there's a tiny kitchen in the back just a little bit of front and, like no one really knew us back then at all and i was like this is perfect this is all we need uh, we quickly grew out of that space after getting in there but um it was because it was through them and again if we hadn't been wholesaling I never would have met them so it was all like I like I don't man I don't want to say it was like meant to be because that sounds very cliche but like it felt so like wow this is like we met these people they're really nice and they they're trying to get rid of like this space and so we met with the landlord he's like yeah you guys can sublet it and then if you guys want to you guys can like you know like go from there and we were like yes and so it kind of landed us here, but we quickly found out that like when we opened the amount of people that came out that didn't really know about us and the people that had already been following us, like we had like an hour long wait the first time we opened here. And I had like a couple of people that like camped out and sat and like were reading a book and oh I was gosh. like, what is happening? And Richardson was like, yeah, we're here for it. And I, it was like crazy. I had so many people that are like, I live literally like five minutes that way. And I walked here with my kids this morning because it was like a cool day. And I was like, wow this is a really cool community yeah. of like people like Richardson's not humongous but it's not small and there's just so many like I don't know like to me Richardson like they keep up with a lot of stuff like they, they'll like have the parade down the street here uh off of Coit and Arapaho and it's just really like like there's not a ton of cities that do that some of them are too big to like really do that but 
Um, even like one of our regulars uh, this year invited us to a um, a block party that he throws every year, and I was like, "People still do that?" Like I thought that was a New York thing where they block yeah. off, and then like he's like, "No, we do it every year over here." And I was like, "Wow, Richardson's actually really cool." Like you know, and I never knew that because I'm from Mesquite and I I live in Carrollton now. Um, but those places, I mean, Mesquite is so small, and we do things like that. But it's a lot more like like on the down low, and you have to be in those little neighborhoods. But like yeah, I was like, this is. A really great space. Honestly, I'm, I'm very lucky that we landed here because of that one, the size of the parking lot. Yeah. And you don't get in Dallas, and then two, like it's so close to like a lot of our like regulars that were already like coming to us at different spots. So it is kind of like it was a coincidence that like we landed here. Yeah, well, we're so glad that you are here. Yeah. <laughs> and so I've noticed that your menu, you kind of rotated, it changes, it's mm -hmm. always new, always fresh, and especially your weekend menus. Yes. And I've also noticed that you use a lot of different. Um, cultures and like traditions from different like food cultures mm -hmm. in your menu so so where does the inspiration for that come from it sounds like you're letting some of your chefs try different recipes yes. or are you going out and doing research or che checking out other restaurants in the area I do a lot of like research for like uh like there's like a couple things like I'll do um like honestly I'll do a deep dive on like the, the cookbooks that I have and a lot of them are like like recipes you see every day and occasionally you'll see this really interesting like recipe where you're like whoa like people in Ethiopia are doing what or like you know if someone in like Greece is doing what like these interesting like things that people just don't make here in the U.S. for some reason and like um I kind of want to like introduce that to people there's some people that already know what they are they're like how did you know about this and I'm like I just found right. out about it and I started making it um but like it's really cool to see because like I've had a couple people like come back and they were like we did like a Persian love cake for like I think it was February because it was got love in the name and it was gluten-free and I had a lady come back to me and she was like we make these where I'm from and she's like I have never seen one here in the U.S. she's like where do you where how did you like, why are you making this? No, yeah. but she's like, I love it. But she's like, well, you know, like, this is like interesting. Like what, like as you're saying questions, like, what was that thought process? Mm -hmm. And I was like, I, I tried it out at home and I loved it. So I was like, oh, they'd be really cute as many little cakes. And she's like, please don't ever take these off. And I was like, oh, they're coming off at the end of this month. <laughs> um, but it's cool to see people like, she's like, I've literally never seen this year. And uh, like, it's cool to like, people want to feel included, like yeah. myself included. Like everyone wants to see themselves like from time to time, like representation is really important to like to us. And it's cool to have people come in and be like, oh, wow, this like salted duck egg like thing is like really cool. Or like, oh, my God, you're making love cakes. Um, and it's just interesting Like we made a uh, like a Russian um, honey cake. And uh, this lady was like, I'm not from Russia, She's like, but I'm from Argentina. We do a similar cake and this tastes just like it. She's like, this is insane. So it's cool to like, like I said, like, Kind of incorporate that because there's people from so many different places especially here in dallas it's like one of the most diverse cities and so it's cool to have people just come through here and like they're like oh my god this is i love this this is from like where i'm from and i'm like oh it's really cool like that have one person like literally one person come in and be like i i like i connect with this is really cool yeah no as you're saying that like in my head i'm like well duh that's why i feel it too like my family's from india and like just to even see there's like tikka masala yes. sandwich on your menu like I didn't grow up eating that but like I feel included I feel like yeah. seen that yeah. you know oh I'm represented here too like yeah. right next to all the other amazing yes. food from that have influences that people in this community I think resonate with but like yeah it feels like a you're, oh yeah yeah that's why we all feel welcome and yes. included here and that's wonderful that y'all yeah continue to include that and like I feel like is such a thread of what y'all do throughout yeah. everything it just makes everything fun when you're like like you know like I know there's always a lot of options everywhere and usually brunch is just like all American which is great I don't have a problem with that but like when I go out to eat I always look for the most adventurous thing on the menu mm -hmm. and me and my husband were like what if we made the menu like like half adventurous and half like you know like yeah. you know eggs and bacon and things like that and so like we made a place that if we went to it in anywhere in the U.S., we would be like, oh, this place has like some something yeah. behind it because they have so many different options that are different. Um, the tiki masala was actually something that we had like on our travels. We had like a, a place that had like a tiki masala uh, sandwich and we like made it our own where like we make our own tiki masala um, uh, sauce and then we pickle onions for it and we, we do all of it. Like the, the raita that we have, like the all of it's made in house. Uh, and I think that what that's what makes us a little different is like we've had people try to sell us stuff before. They're like, if you guys want like 
you know, this or do you want that? We make all our syrups in house. And yes, there's going to be mistakes. And there's going to be times where someone gets something a little too salty because the sauce is over salted. <laughs> but that's part of being human. And like it, we make it our culture to like we'll comp people's orders. We'll 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 try to make it right. But like I'd rather make it in house and know that it's tasty than have someone be like, what's in this? And be like, I have no idea because I don't make it. Uh, yeah. Well, I like that. I yeah. like to hear that the kind of the behind the scenes of yeah. how much you care for every little thing that's going on the menu and that you're serving. Yeah. It's you know, as a customer, it feels <laughs> like great to hear. Yeah. Well, I know one of your most popular things, um, is the the cruffin, yes. the churro cruffin. Yeah. So how did that, did you invent that? Me and my husband. So we, I, I took him to Mexico uh, to meet my grandmother before she passed. And so we, he was like, oh my God, I didn't, he's like, it sounds, he's like, it sounds very silly. But he's like, I didn't really think there was churros everywhere in Mexico. But where you when where my where my parents are from, um, there's literally like a little churro shops everywhere and like people making them on the streets and like he was like, I thought that was like a thing that people thought about Mexico, but he's like, It's really true. So we were trying a lot of churros and stuff and he was like, These are really good, like better than the ones I've had in the US and I was like, I don't know. So we were like kinda testing the dough we were like figuring out what the dough looked like and he was like well, what if we, we were doing, we were trying to figure out a cruffin idea. Cause back then I think only a handful of people were doing cruffins. And, uh, he was like, what if we covered it in cinnamon sugar? And I was like, what if we put, we kind of like, we we're like, what if we put dulce de leche in it? So we started making them. We, we put, put them on one of our pop-ups and it like sold out. And I was like, oh my God, that's what we were missing is like a thing that made us kind of like different or special. And, uh, the true cruffin was our first like sell like we would sell out of it there was a couple years ago during the like right after the pandemic like a year after that I took it off the menu because I was going to try to put a different cruffin on I had angry emails people oh like goodness. what happened to the cruffin where is the true cruffin my my favorite and I was like oh my goodness wow. so I put it on it has not left in the last like I think we started in started the, the bakery in 2017 and the true cruffin came in 2018 and since 2018 I have not been able to take it off uh, which is great because my bakers, they're like, okay, we're always going to make this. There's some staples that they're like happy to have because they're like every month they're like, oh, next month's going to be so hard because you have to like gear up for a new month. Uh, so they're happy that there's a couple staples on the menu that don't change. Well, can you talk us through, I know you brought one to share with yes. us and as we've this podcast season, we've gone to different restaurants and they've shared their different special things with us. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm so excited that you're sharing the churro cruffin with us. Um, but yeah, could you tell us like exactly like what's inside of it? Yeah. So there's the dulce de leche inside of it. It's sweet and condensed milk that you have to cook until it's, I mean, like caramel colored, which takes over five, six hours. Oh, wow. So it's labor intensive. So it's not like when you see it and you're like, it's just a churro cruffin. It's very labor intensive, like product yeah. um and then the actual croissant dough the croissant dough we have like we've perfected this croissant it's changed so much throughout the years uh and right now this is like the perfect iteration since me and my husband started it um there's a ton of layers you can kind of see them too like there's like layers we um we cinnamon sugar it and it's just dulce de leche inside it's very simple yeah. like at, up front but like making dulce de leche from scratch is not easy so I always um you know people are like we, we, it's funny that I bring this out because it's kind of controversial. So we started out with so much dulce de leche. People would get upset that we had so much in it. And then we went down on dulce de leche and we had more people upset that there wasn't enough filling. So right now I think I have had the least complaints about this dulce de leche. So that you just uh, keep it there. It's, yes. It's measured out by weight now. Cause we used to just be like, oh, just do it by hand. Everything's by weight oh, now. Wow. So again, this is a much more labor intensive pastry than you think. Oh, my goodness. Well, I'm really excited that I get to try it. Yes. I actually haven't tried it before. I've bought oh, it nice. and then sometimes I give it away or someone takes it at my house. Yes. And so I'm really excited to try it. How long does it take, I guess, the process? Do you start super early in the morning every yes. day? So uh, at like 5 a.m., my girls start laminating every day. We just changed our schedule. We used to do it the night before. Now we're doing it like... 5 a.m. they start laminating and then we'll uh, like we'll basically like roll everything for the day before um, and then uh, proof it um, from like kind of cold uh, and it takes about three hours to, to proof. So in total, it probably takes a day and a half to make everything. You know, croissant dough takes a while to make and it's very... Yeah. Very crumbly, crumbly, very flaky. I was about to ask, how, how do I eat this? 
<laughs> it's very flaky. Um, it's just so that, good. That sugar, like, dulce de leche is, like, one of my favorites. Uh, I love churros, but I could eat the dulce de leche on its own. Like, in Mexico, they sell it on, like, little spoons. They'll just, like, mm. like they're basically, like, put it on a spoon, and they'll, pla they'll wrap it in plastic, and they'll sell them. Sometimes they put... Um, what is it, uh, like nuts on top of yes. it so you can just eat it. And as a kid, I used to, I mean, it's no wonder I love cooking. As a kid, I used to eat everything. Like anything that was put in front of me, I would eat. So in Mexico, they would do those dulce de leche spoons. And I was like, what is this? Yes. And then coming back to the U.S., I was like, oh, it's dulce de leche. I didn't know what it was called. I thought it was a caramelized yeah, yeah, yeah. candy thing. So... But yeah, it's one of my favorite things. <laughs> and now it's in, yeah, your most one of your most famous things. Yes. It's fantastic. Oh, thank and you. I can see why people got upset when you took it off the <laughs> menu. Like, where can I get my churro crepe? Especially if, you know, you invented it. And yeah. it's we got have to come to La Casita yeah. to get it. Yes. <laughs> well, Marixa, thank you so much for your time and for sharing your story yeah. and just how you've been creating this beautiful space and thank community you. and with like it's, it's just such an added bonus of being in this community of like being able to come to places like this where people care about their customers, care about their staff. And it's a joy to just get to know you a little bit more. Oh, well, thank you. So this is so amazing. I, this is the first time we're meeting and I feel like, I feel like an old friend. We're like just yeah. chit chatting. So. Can we please be friends? <laughs> yeah, please. Yeah. No, this is super exciting. Like I like, you know, thank you for having me on and like for, you know, sharing this with us. So Yes. Thank you. Thanks. Yeah, we're so glad to have you to host you and to share. I I know that a lot of people like in our congregation have heard about it, but I know there's a big chunk that haven't. And so I hope like you're down the street from us. It took us yeah. about three minutes to get here. So <laughs> oh, nice. this will definitely be a recommend recommendation yeah. to if you haven't tried it, listen to the episode and definitely yeah. go get a churro gruffin. <laughs> If you're like me and instantly fell in love with the sweetness and welcoming spirit here at La Casita, and you'd like to try it for yourself, you can find uh, links to their socials, their address and hours on our website, fumcr.com slash more than Sunday. And also, we'd like to invite you to join us for a churro cruffin. We're going to have our very first More Than Sunday meetup at the end of this season. And for more information and to let us know to save you a seat, you can go to our website as well. Thank you so much for listening. I hope you tune in next Wednesday as we visit another local restaurant uh, to hear some of their secrets and their tips on building community around food. I hope you have a great day.